Welcome back! This is the final video of chapter 18 on controllers, where we will explore how our controllers, mentioned earlier, work through real-life examples. Before we get started, one thing is missing from our knowledge of controllers. What do you mean? So far, we've learned the basic concepts, looked at block diagrams and time functions, but we still don't know how to tune the controllers. Accurate adjustment of a controller is done by a serious mathematical analysis, which involves modeling the plant and then analyzing the model in detail. We look at the properties of the output waveforms for a given input, and then solve the problem, which in most cases leads to an optimization problem by computer. For series control systems like PID, the tuning problem means that we have to find the appropriate values for the parameters Kp, Ki, and Kd. There are three ways to find the parameters of a controller. It can be done heuristically, where we search for the right parameters by trial and error. In model-based tuning, the parameters are calculated exactly based on the given specification of the system. It usually leads to the solution of a nonlinear equation in the general case. In the third case, we tune the parameters using prior knowledge based on relations and rules of thumb, called rule-based tuning. The rules of thumb are only applicable in places where the process can tolerate being on the boundary of self-oscillation or the self-oscillation and the positive feedback accidentally generated during tuning can't cause errors in the system. One possible tuning rule is ziegler nichols tuning. This does not require any complicated mathematical apparatus. It is a simple series of steps which are as follows. Ki and Kd should be zero and let's increase Kp in small steps until the plant is at the limit of stability, in other words, continuously swinging sinusoidally. The resulting Kp value is called the critical loop gain, in short, Kp crit. After that, we need to measure the period of time of the sine wave of constant amplitude denoted by t, meaning the critical period time. Depending on the parameters obtained, we can now set our controllers. To do this, we show you a table that will help you to set the values easily. For the P controller, Kp is taken to be 0.45 times Kp crit. For the PI controller, we do the same and we obtain the parameter Ki as the reciprocal of 0.85 times T crit. For PD, Kp is 0.8 times Kp crit, Kd is 1 eighth of T crit. This value is unchanged for the PID controller, while Ki is 1 over 0.5 T crit and Kp is 0.6 times Kp crit. We think it is important to note that for example, the control loops of nuclear power plants are not set using this method for understandable reasons. But this method is an excellent way to set the RPM of a fixed motor. After examining the theoretical background and history of control engineering, let's look at the current and future ambitions of this field. In order to explore the solar system, it is essential that our spacecraft are able to land on the surface of a planet, so that we can get the right people and scientific instruments there. This problem was already known in the 1960s, when NASA was planning the lunar landing. In 2009, a study was published showing that engineers, when planning the landing, imagined a landing in an ellipse drawn on the planet, where this spacecraft has a 99% chance of landing. When NASA sent the Mars Pathfinder spacecraft to Mars in 1997, the ellipse in which they expected to land had a main axis 150 km long, which is not an encouraging result. Although the main axis of the ellipse calculated for Mars Curiosity, which landed in 2012, was only 20 km, this was still too much of an uncertainty. However, the question remains, how has SpaceX managed to launch spacecraft that return and land on a ship of nearly 5,000 square meters in size since 2015? The main difference between the two landings is that the Mars rovers use parachutes, while SpaceX uses rockets to land. The movement of the parachutes is difficult to estimate, while the job of the rocket's controller is simple to describe and complex to perform. 
plan an optimal path to the finish line without running out of fuel. This is no simple task either, but you also must take into account the time limit. The rocket system has to calculate this before it runs out of fuel or, in the worst case, it hits the ground. During the control process, the rocket reacts to changes in the environment that alter its trajectory, known as scatter, which the onboard computers use to recalculate its trajectory so that the missile still lands with a high level of certainty within the target area. Another modern control application of PID is the pacemaker, also known as a heart rate regulator. This is an implant that is needed in the event of abnormal heart function. The pacemaker consists of two functional units. The first is the sensing circuit, which detects the patient's heart rhythm and heart rate. The second is the output circuit, which sends electrical signals to the heart muscles. This electrical signal is used to control the patient's heart rate. Normally, the small electrical pulses generated by the pacemaker can maintain a regular heart rhythm. However, in the case of serious heart disorders, the device must be adjusted to generate strong compulsive pulses in the event of a heart problem, which helps the patient return to a normal heartbeat. Heart rhythm control can be achieved with a PID controller, the simplified block diagram of which is as follows. The circuit receives its signal directly from the heart. This is the current heart rate and is represented by Y. R is the desired heart rate, which is what we want to deliver to the heart. And so we have our control circuit. The parameters of these controllers can be tuned using the ziegler nichols method, and it is a bit more accurate and efficient if a neural network is used to tune the PID. In this case, the network adapts better to the heart rate control, resulting in lower overshoot, shorter settling time, and a faster ramp up time. We have seen again that control is present in many areas of life, and we need it very much for a system to work as intended, autonomously and with minimal external interference. As we have seen, from space flight to medical technology, there are many applications for these controllers. In this part of the curriculum, we have explored the science of control engineering, and in particular, about closed loop control. We have learned about the differences between open and closed loop control. We have seen what parameters are used to draw conclusions about a controller, and we have also become familiar with the concept of stability. We are no stranger to P, PI, PD and PID controllers, and we are also familiar with their tuning methods. In the next chapter, chapter 19, we will discuss the practical implementation of a P and a PI controller, building on the theoretical knowledge we have gathered. We hope the information provided in this chapter has been useful and will serve as a valuable conceptual guide for your future studies. Thank you for your attention so far, and we encourage you to stay tuned for the upcoming lessons. If you want to know when the new episodes will be released, follow us on Facebook, where we share the latest news. This chapter of the curriculum, along with the others, can be found in PDF format at crystalclearelectronics2.eu. Bye! Bye-bye!